G'day fellas, a little bit of a different video that we've got here for you, it is a build order breakdown. So I've been having a lot of questions about this build order and wonder, or people wondering uh, if I could focus on this build order just to try and explain it. So I'm going to be doing my best to walk you through it. This is a game I played just before against the Easy AI just so that we've got a controlled environment. And I'm going to be walking you guys through exactly all the steps you need to do to be able to perform this build order and to get it at the best possible timings that you can. So let's get into it. Uh, so we'll start the game off, we'll just play it at one speed, so all of the villagers are going to come over and hit this sheep, with the exception of one who's going to go out and build a hunting cabin. Town Center going to be working its way up towards uh, villagers, so no early training of a scout, we'll do our scout training from the hunting cabin. Uh, so with the hunting cabin, you want to look for the best position for it, so ideally uh, the one with the most tree coverage, uh, and the best way to identify that is typically on a flat surface like this. If you do it on an edge like this, sometimes you're only going to be getting... A, a few trees in there so uh with the scout very important you want to just be heading out towards the middle of the map you're looking for the triple double uh which is the the two sets of three sheep so they should probably be somewhere else around here so there you go there's the three other sheep so those are what you're looking for with this opening scout you're also looking for your enemy's hunt now if you spot your hunt uh on the way out you're just going to ignore it because your second scout is going to pick it up so you can see already we're training a second scout from this and straight into a house and then a lumber camp. Now, it's just with one villager. Uh, behind this, make sure that you don't have too many villagers queued up because you are going to need that extra food just to train a couple more scouts. And so now that we found the enemy's hunt, we're just going to make sure that we shift click each of the deer. So you just grab it and you just shift click one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's all you want to be doing. And got to be careful if the enemy scout does come in. Now, I uh, very purposefully didn't kill the second hunt of the enemy scout just because there's always the possibility that they could contest it. Uh, so I, I want to sort of maintain that environment for you guys. Um, and But th that's what you want to be doing. And if that scout does come in, then you've got to try and play a little bit of a, a weird game. Uh, but ideally, you want to wait for your second scout to then come up and do that. So if, that, if the enemy is contesting this hunt, you would bring up your second scout and then you would just start one-shotting the deer. And then your third scout would come and begin looking for the, uh, the deer spawns. But now you can see I've got a third scout out. He's going to be coming up towards the north here. Uh, and... All, all this time, we've just had villagers on food, with the exception of the one uh, that made our hunting cabin, our house, and our lumber camp. So we've only gone for three scouts at this point in time. Uh, we're also luring in the wolf. Now, it's really important to bring this scout back. This was your starting scout. You, he needs to come back. He must come back. And the reason why is because you can see that down here, it looks like we might only have one sheep that is left. So we need to make sure that these guys have got uh, sheep to, to eat. And there is a, a period that's... Uh, probably within the next 15 to 20 seconds that this sheep is going to run out. It's very difficult to click on that, but we really need to have those sheep back and need to get them back as soon as possible. When we put down the golden gate, we want to put it down as close to our town center as possible. You can leave a one tile gap just so that you've got a little bit of room for deer uh, because we will be going for professional scouts and then getting four villagers straight onto the golden gate. So if you can click up at about two minutes 30, that is not too bad of a time at all. You also want to make sure that you're killing all of your sheep before you age up. During the transition period, make sure that you don't have any idle time with your town center and then you want to get a scout in the queue. So that is what you're looking for. At the same time with our scouts, we are just continuing to shift click them around the map. Uh, make sure that you A, move them so that if they do run across any wolves that they will just immediately start attacking them. And that's what we've done here. So if you just right click them, they're not going to do that. But if you A, move them, so you can see here, I must have gone, I must have done a shift click. It, oh, there we go. Now it's going to attack. So maybe uh, the, the A move uh, did finally work. But uh, now during the transition period, so once you've gotten your... Uh, villager in the queue and once you've got a scout out so you ideally you want to aim for at least four scouts that that is in my opinion is the the critical number uh, that's when you can begin transitioning uh, villagers over towards wood so the ratio that you want to look for is two to one so for every villager that you've got on food you want to have half a villager over on wood or every one villager you've got on wood you want to have two uh, on food uh, and then these landmark villagers are going to be uh, gathering up or going to be heading over to food as well. Uh, and it, it'll it'll be very normal for you to sort of like look down there and be like, oh, I've got 12 villagers on food and only four on wood. Like, oh, I'm not doing it well. That's okay. It, it, it's one of those things where it, it's it's not particularly tight. Uh, age up going to be coming in at about 410. So not too bad of a timing. And now with those four scouts that we've made, going to be moving out to the enemy's hunt. Uh, so ideally you want to be going for the one that's closest to your base uh, from your enemy and just denying them and you can see us uh, So now that we've aged up the first thing that we do we sell food and we immediately start uh, re Researching professional scouts 
Uh, and so you can see that we are moving towards... Um, we, we've got that 2 to 1 ratio still going for us. 13 to 6 at the moment. So not too bad. And we're just chilling out at the moment. We're going to be taking the uh, the deer from our opponent. They're playing the English and, you know, they're probably doing their own thing. 435, probably not even aged up yet, you know, if this was a, a, a real opponent. Uh, but we've already got professional scouts on the way, so we definitely mean business uh, by the same token. We're still happy over here. Uh, and so what we're aiming for is we're aiming for enough foot wood to drop down a wooden fortress. It's going to be really important for us to get that out. It's going to give us a nice little defensive line. And you can see I've actually calculated it perfectly right there. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, and then dropping down the wooden fortress straight away uh, with all of those villagers. And then going to get them back onto wood eventually. So that's going to be buffing up our wood line because it does give that 20% more. Now, as soon as Professional Scouts comes in, we're going to be training more scouts. So looking for that seven scout number because keep in mind, there's no such thing as too many scouts when you're playing the Rus. They get a lot of good bonuses for their scouts. Uh, one of those being Boyer's Fortitude which increases scout health by 20. So that's not 20%, that's 20. So it's, it works out to be like 25, 26%. It's a lot. So making sure that we pre-move all of our deer, so or, or all of our scouts, so they're ready to pick up the deer. Don't have to waste any time. And now going to be moving back towards the base. Professional scouts is completed. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. So you can see that we're sort of out of sync. We've got four four deer that are taken from this hunt. Uh, and we're going to have to send three back out to grab that. And then by the same time, well, at the same time, we're also trying our best to uh, micromanage this hunt as well as we're sending out deer. Uh, in the meantime, we're still doing our two to one ratio. You can see we're at 15 and seven. Uh, and we are just working towards our castle age. Now, what we're doing is we're saving up our ticket. So you need to, to calculate exactly how much it is uh, that you're going to need for this. So keep in mind, it's 150 gold per ticket. So that's 300 gold. That uh, would take us to 538. So we're still going to need quite a fair bit of gold. So we're going to be waiting for our third ticket. And that's per perfectly fine. Um, so some people like to sell wood. Some people like to sell food. Personally, I'm a big fan of selling food. I think it makes a lot of sense just because uh, as the Rusu are going to have a lot of food. And you're really going to need that wood uh, to be dropping down those, uh, those uh, uh, archery ranges. So now continuing to... Uh, APM our way uh, towards that professional scouts and you can see that we are sort of rallying scouts everywhere it can be a little bit hard don't worry if you've got idle time with your scouts you can see these two scouts they come in they drop off under the town center it takes me a bit of time to come out a little nice little push there coming in from from the two scouts uh, and then these guys are going to be going, uh, dropping this off and then going to be working their way back up here. And it's important to note when you do bring in your first set of, uh, of deer, make sure you, that you switch over from your sheep over to your deer because the deer does gather faster. And now you can see we're hitting up towards that critical amount of food. We're going to begin doing some sales. You can see that we've got the, the two tickets coming in right at seven minutes and we're going to be selling it. And now when we do a force drop off, going to be dropping down Abbey of the Trinity, 7 minutes 15, so a really nice time here, and dropping it down with a heap of villagers, so we want to try and get up as quickly as possible. You can see how many, how much wood we've got in the bank as well, so we're going to be able to drop down 1, 2, 3 archery ranges straight away. At the same time, we're still bringing in those deer carcasses. You can see we've got a little bit of idle time. That's all right. We're going to take our time. We've taken all of this hunt. We've taken all of this hunt with the exception of this one, but don't worry, it'll come in soon. Uh, but uh, And we're working towards that with the three archery ranges up. And one of the most important things that you can do with this build order is have an excess of wood. Honestly, there's so much you can do with wood. You can add a monastery in, which you're going to need to do. You can add double blacksmith, smith, which you're going to need to do. More houses, more archery ranges, more hunting cabins. There is no such thing as too much wood with this build. So don't be afraid to put, you know, that two to one ratio. Even if it means that, like, we're, we're sitting on 30 villages right now. Even if you have, like, even if you go to a one to one ratio, I still think that's quite fine uh, for this build order. Up at eight minutes, 10 now. So a really nice age up time here uh, and straight away into horse archer training you can see that we got a little bit of idle time here on the third um, on the third archery range but that's okay it's going to take time uh, and our we've got uh, idle uh, scouts out now so uh, scouts are going to be coming in and fending off this vanguard men at arm attack uh, we are obviously playing against the easy ai uh, but if, if these scouts weren't here they'd probably still be working towards it must be a single deer that's left up here somewhere there it is it's on on top of the uh on top of the trading post but now we've got the horse archers going to come out and back up our our vanguard men at arms and so from this point what is our goal so once we i should have mentioned so once you get up you're also going to need gold for your abbey of the trinity you're going to need to start making warrior monks immediately so there's two different ways you can play it. If you're playing against another fast castle civilization, so that's Holy Roman Empire, um, that is another Rus player, then typically you're going to want to go for their relics first. 
So that means these relics on the other side of the map. Now, I haven't scouted out the map particularly well, uh, even though I do have a lot of scouts. So that is, is a mistake. But I'm playing against the English here, which aren't typically a fast castle sieve. So I say, you know what? I'm just going to go for my own relics. So rallying over with the Abbey of the Trinity towards that relic and uh, sending my warrior monk over there. And then we're just going to shift click him back. So once he's picked this up, uh, we will take our time. And now going to be heading out over on the rest of the map. And we are looking to harass our enemy at the same time. Uh, still not taking that. And then with the Abbey of the Trinity, we will move that. So you can see we've uh, we've now picked that one up and we've changed our rally point for the Abbey of the Trinity. There it is now coming out to this uh, next relic. So we're looking to secure three relics in the Abbey of the Trinity and then we'll drop down a monastery for the fourth and fifth relic. Uh, and now we're pushing out with our horse archers. This is a really key point uh, to begin applying pressure to the enemy. Uh, look to continue stealing their hunt. Now we're getting a fair bit of bounty here, but at this point it doesn't really matter that much because we've got the relics that are going to be providing providing us so much gold that it really isn't going to be super important. Now, you can look to get things like the survival techniques um, technology. It's really not that important in my opinion, though. You're just going to have so many resources here as the rules player already. You basically have survival techniques for free from your bounty. Um, but typically, you, you'd be looking towards about that 250 bounty uh, for the Rus um, as a standard. If you can hit that 250 bounty, you can be feeling pretty good about yourself. Um, and keep in mind, you're going to need to sell those three tickets. So you do have a bit of wiggle room there in the event that you don't even make it up to that 250 bounty. If you're sitting below that about 200, I think you should still be able to make it up with three tickets. Uh, so continuing to grab in the, the hunted deer, continuing to grab in the relics from all over the map. And you see that uh, that next worry monk going to be coming out towards the third relic. We've scattered out a fourth relic down here. That worry monk's going to be going and grabbing it. And keep in mind, you can add in as many worry monks as you want because these guys actually have a bonus. So when they are getting into battle and they hit, melee hit an enemy, you will actually apply a buff to all of the uh, all of the units in the immediate facility in the immediate vicinity rather uh, it'll give them plus one armor so it's called saint's blessing it's a, a really really nice buff uh, so don't be afraid to make these and these guys are quite cheap as well they're only uh, 20 food 100 gold and you're going to have no shortage of gold like you are going to be absolutely fine when it comes to gold throughout the game you're probably going to be using that uh to balance your economy as well. So you can see here, I've got a little bit too much food, not enough wood. That's okay. I'm just going to buy some wood with my golden gate. And I'm always going to have favorable trades doing that. Then capturing sacred sites. I've got the three warrior monks out. I'm, I think I'm adding in a fourth one or, or, or more, but uh, now having to drop down a monastery because you can see I've got my two uh, relics here. I've got a third one coming in, but I'm also going to have a fourth relic coming in very shortly. Uh, if we can have a look, I'm sure it's somewhere here. Okay, I'm not, not too sure where that fourth relic is, uh, but it is coming in, and that's where it, your fourth relic is going to be held uh, in that monastery, because it can't fit in the Abbey of the Trinity. There's the fourth one coming in now. So we're balancing out our economy once again. We're buying wood here. Uh, and so once again, uh, it, it's important to note that there's no such thing as a, a shortage of wood. So I've got 25 villages on food, only 13 on wood. Uh, this should probably even, this should, should be like at the moment, 2020 is, is fine. 20 villages on food, 20 villages on wood. I think that's absolutely fine. Uh, and, and that way your economy is a little bit more balanced. Behind this, adding more archery ranges, you can see that our economy is getting so big at this point that I'm on five archery ranges and I'm still not being able to keep up with production. Like th that is how, or not able to keep up with my economy. So that's it. Uh, when it comes to microing out these units, you want to try and make sure that you keep them in a line formation because that way it's going to maximize the concave that you get. So typically, your your composition is going to just be horse archers and scouts. Scouts on the front line, they're going to be tanking up because you're going to have Boyar's Fortitude. So you, you have a look at the scouts and I think they've got 85 health. Let's have a look. No, 110 health. It's the horse archer, 85 health. Yeah, so the scouts have got 110 health. Uh, and so they are going to go up to 130 health. And then they also get all the blacksmith upgrades as well. So they're going to be your tanks. And your horse archers are going to be on the back line. They're going to be doing the defense. So now we've got the three sacred sites. Uh, it's 13 minutes. We've got a trickle of 800 gold a minute uh, once that maxes out, or at least 700 gold a minute because we haven't found that fifth relic yet because the fifth relic is out over here on the left-hand side. Uh, you can actually see the AI has walled up its base. Very, very cute AI. I like how you got the gates and you forgot this part. Very, very typical AI of you. Uh, or very typical uh, of, of the villagers, rather, to forget that. But now, um, so... At this point, what you're going to be wanting to do with your army is just sort of control the narrative about the fights. So you, you try and take advantageous fights, try and force your enemy to idling their villages. Don't commit too hard at this point. You're just trying to build up your mass. You're trying to continue um, your infrastructure and trying to hold onto the sacred sites for as long as possible. Get your upgrades so you can see Boyar's Fortitude is coming in. Uh, and getting plus one, plus two. And before you really take a fight, unless it's a, a really good fight for you, you don't want to be, um, you don't want to be uh, committing to that fight. Um, 
uh, once, until you've got those upgrades. It's really, really key. I see a lot of players uh, forgetting to get Boyar's Fortitude as well. It's quite an expensive upgrade. You can see here it costs 700 resources, but it is one of the best upgrades in the game, in my opinion. It is such a great, unique upgrade just because it affects all cavalry. And so you can see 85 will go up to 105, 110 will go up to 130, 190 goes up to 210. So all of these units are really good to tank with. Um, and yeah, so that's essentially it. And you can see the line formation now coming out. Uh, you might need to split these off into two groups. Uh, that's one thing to note as well when you're doing the line formation. Uh, and so I've just resigned here just because that, that's essentially it. That's what I wanted to show you. So leave leave your comments or leave your questions in the uh, in the comments down below. Uh, let me know if there's any improvements that you think I could be making to this build order. And if you think I missed anything, make sure you let me know. Um, but other than that, that, that's essentially the best way, in my opinion, to do it. That's the fastest way to do it. Um, and it's the safest way to do it. Um, so I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.